Miracy. I'm Amanda Abeya, and you're listening to Making It. I run a business called Make Money Your Honey, and we help women slay their sales. The first thing I remember is I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be an artist. I did that for a while. I was the kid who went to art camp. I was always drawing on napkins, painting on stuff. I was that kid. And then I also remember I had like a little stint where I wanted to be a teacher and I would like line up all the stuffed animals and make my younger brother like sit with them while teaching God knows what. I have no idea what I was even talking about. Or I would even do like little crafts and try and sell them. So apparently I was always like a little bit of a hustler. I just didn't know it. My mother was a computer programmer in the 80s. So she was one of the only women there. And she had to deal with a lot of things that were difficult. Like she always tells me a story about how she practically had to ask for permission to take maternity leave when she found out she was pregnant with me and how it irritated her to no end. So with me, she was always like, you have to do your own thing because if you ever want to have a family and in Latino culture, family is like everything. Our whole lives revolve around it then you are going to have to be an entrepreneur. There's no other way. You're going to have to do your own thing. So although I never really saw it for myself because I never saw it modeled for me, the seeds were definitely planted. I took a bit of a detour after high school. When I was in high school, it became clear to me that I wanted to be a writer. And I did the journalism program in my high school, which in my county, it was like a big deal. And then what happened was my parents sent me to Catholic school. They didn't really have anything one would consider to be practical whatsoever in the real world because it was like traditional liberal arts education. So I ended up getting a degree in English literature because it was the closest thing to writing and then graduating and being like, great, what am I supposed to do with this thing? And now, you know, many years down the road, I realized how that English degree just helped me really learn how to pick up on patterns, which actually made me pretty good at marketing and sales. So my first job, I was actually an English teacher as a second language. So there's that teaching thing I was doing as a kid. And then the second job, I actually ended up working for like a third party recruiting agency, which was a straight up sales job. The problem was nobody told me I was in sales, so I didn't know what I was doing. Every single job I've ever had was pretty much a sales job. But because I never got properly trained, everybody was like, you're good with people, go. (laughs) So I would get results, but I would have no idea what I was doing at all. So it was this time period for a few years where I was kind of doing all the things, just trying to figure it out. And then finally quit that job in 2013 and would end up doing just the financial writing full time until about 2017 when I started transitioning out of it. My first business, the only way to make more money would have been to take on more clients. And I literally had no more time. And I was already like top of market in terms of what I was getting paid, which was good money. But again, I wanted more for myself. And so that was number one. So I got some assistance on how to figure that out. And then the second thing that I did is once I got that assistance, I ended up creating a training program. This was back in 2017. And it's called Persuade to Profit. It's still around. And I taught people how to put offers together. I taught them marketing psychology. And the thing that really made us stand out is that I taught them sales because I'd been in sales related jobs since I was 20. So at that point, I was what, 29 years old. So we're going on nine, 10 years by the time I was teaching this. And what I did was I put it out there. I put it out to my audience. I started calling people. I started sending emails. I said, hey, look, I'm doing this group coaching program. You're the first one that I'm letting know about this. And in two weeks, I made more money selling that than I would have made writing in a month. I had been in a lot of training programs over the years that were designed for women and no hate, no shade, no nothing. But it was kind of like, oh, here's attraction marketing and here's how to manifest. And it was very, very little sales. At some point, I was like, can someone just teach me how to close a deal? But I hadn't ever really gotten properly trained and I had to go seek it out and I had to go learn from men. So I spent years with male mentors really teaching me the foundations of sales, of business, these skills that a lot of the women-centric spaces were just not teaching. A lot of them still aren't teaching it because I was talking to a client last week and she goes, well, when you learn how to teach sales, like don't tell me it's this attraction marketing nonsense. I'm like, no, I'm gonna teach you how to close. That's what we're gonna do. So I realized I had to go learn from men. And then when I was learning from men, I realized that 
as much as I love them and appreciate them and respect them, there were a lot of things that I would have to translate over for me as a woman just because I'd been conditioned so differently. So I was coming up against other psychological barriers that perhaps they didn't have to deal with. And then they wouldn't understand how to deal with that psychological barrier because they're not women. There's a lot of people pleasing that we have to deal with. There's that good girl mentality. The good girl needs to die if you're going to get good at sales and relationships. So there's the good girl mentality that women are afraid of being called the B word. They confuse assertiveness with aggression because they don't understand the difference. So they usually go into passive. Women also have to oftentimes deal with like a sister wound where it's like, I can't be visible because other women are going to hate me. Basically, is one of the things that we have to deal with. A lot of women were conditioned into like being quiet and not asking for their needs, oftentimes for, you know, probably safety reasons, other times, because that's just what we do. Making it really is about making sure that whatever business you have created is in alignment with your values and the way that you're trying to live. And part of what I see going on a lot online or just in general is people chasing businesses and ideas that they can't even really get 100% behind. So then they wonder why they're miserable. I think previously my values would have been like, get success, do the achievement. And that's fun. But what I realized was that I was basically doing all of that based on insecurities that I had since I was a kid and also just playing out some family dynamics that weren't exactly the healthiest because of some stuff my grandparents and parents had gone through. And what happened was during that period, I was having massive success and my dad ended up in the hospital. I almost lost him twice in an eight month period and everything just felt like it was kind of collapsing on me. And I realized that I had to rebuild my business from a totally different place. So values are family, you know, it's, it's relationships at the end of the day. Everything is relationships, whether it's your family, whether it's business, whether it's your romantic partner, everything is about people. So that's number one. And then number two, what I would say is, is spirit. It's just making sure that what I'm doing is in alignment and giving back to the greater good. And that's really it. It's people and consciousness. Before, what I would have told you is like the stereotypical answer, like freedom and making a lot of money. Life is not always easy. It's meant to be very challenging, but it's also not supposed to be as hard as we make it out to be. I was coaching one of my team members on sales and I noticed how she was struggling in a particular area. And I realized, I'm like, girl, you're, you're shut down, right? Like you're shut down. You're not letting people in, you're walled off. And they can sense that. I determined why she was feeling shut off. It goes back to some childhood stuff. We did some work on it. And within three days of her starting to open up more, people were giving her free gift cards. She was making more money. Like men wanted to solve all her problems. And she came back to me. And this is a thing women do, by the way. She came back to me and she starts questioning it. She's like, oh, it must be a fluke. It can't be me. Like, this is so crazy. I'm like, no, this is the way it's supposed to be. The legacy I'd like to be remembered for is helping women to realize that they are valuable. They are worthy. Women are magic. The problem is women don't know it. That's what I want my legacy to be, for women to remember that they are magic. And all the conditioning and all the stuff we've been told, everything from be the good girl, be quiet, don't ask for what you want, all the way to you should be afraid of men because that's a big one women have gotten, especially in the last couple of generations, which is causing all kinds of problems in their personal relationships and business. Everything that we've been told up until now that has us so confused is the exact opposite of how magical we really are. I'm Amanda Abeya, and you've been listening to Making It. You can find me at amandaabeya.com or the link in the show notes. Making It is part of the Mira CFM podcast network, which also includes such shows as Course Lab and Once Upon a Business. This episode of Making It was produced by Danny Bermont and Jeff Govertson. Cynthia Lamb is supervising producer. Danny Eney, that's me, is executive producer. Post-production by Post Office Sound. To catch the great episodes that are coming up on Making It, please give us a follow on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now. And if you like the show, please leave us a starred review. It's the best way to help us get these ideas to more people. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.